So what I want to do is just sort of explore this idea a little bit further uh, and let's just have some examples, right? So if we had a couple of actual vectors defined, so I've got an actual A and an actual B, um, what could we do with this, right? Well, I want us to explore two different things that we can do it with it. Firstly, uh, let's just find the angle. Let's make this part um, one, find the angle between uh, A and B. By the way, if I was being uh, more technically accurate, I'd say find the acute angle because of course you could do the, the um, reflex angle as well, but usually we want the smallest one, right? It's very, very similar to in complex numbers like we were talking about. Uh, what's it called, by the way, when you look for an angle to a complex number, it's got another A name. Do you remember what that is? The argument. Argument, very good. And then when it comes to the argument, right, um, any complex number on the plane, you can think of an infinite number of angles. You can just keep on going round and round and round the argand diagram. But there's one angle, one argument, that is the smallest one, right? Do you remember what that's called? It starts with a P. It's the, oh, it's been a little while, hey? It's the, it's the principal argument, I guess principal in this context being like the main one. Though it's quite funny when you look at that, especially as a teacher, I'm like, yes, I've had principal arguments in the past, not this kind though. Anyway, this is the same idea, right? We're looking for the smallest angle because why use a big angle if a small angle will do the same job? So in this case, uh, let's begin. In some ways, it's a fairly routine thing to do, right? Where you can just uh, trot out the formula, cos theta equals, and I'm going to start computing the dot product on the top, and I'm going to need the magnitudes on the bottom, okay? So just to make it easier for you, I'm just going to highlight, here are our x components, here are our y components, and here are our z components. So can you guys tell me, what am I going to do to start computing that dot product? Multiply the three, three, one, zero, three, three. Yep, perfect. So I've got my color code here. So um, not that you have to do this, but just to make it very, very obvious, you multiply your x components, that gives you negative three. In this case, your y components give you a big fat zero. And then what do my z components give us? That's plus eight. Okay, fantastic. So there's the numerator. Dot product, not that hard to calculate. And then on the denominator, I now independently need to work out each of the magnitudes. Now, have a look carefully because I didn't choose these numbers by accident, right? You've got three, zero, negative four. When I square to do Pythagoras, what am I going to get? The square root of what? Five. Yep, so uh, 25, which gives you five. So there's the 16 and the nine combining there. And then if you have a look at the, um, the B vector, right? Uh, when you square, you're going to get one, square. four, and four. So yeah, that yeah. gives you that gives you nine. Now, just uh, again, I, I keep saying this right and try to point out because I want you to realize it's deliberate, right? Um, I, I chose these vectors because they would be easy to work with. Um, I've gotten integer values out of this, right? Which uh, not just sorry, integer values. I've gotten square values out of it, right? Um, how did I do that though? Um, you might recognize when it comes to a uh, three and four, of course, they are two thirds of a Pythagorean triad, right? Uh, Pythagorean triple, so three, four, five. Um, one, two, and two are actually not a Pythagorean triad, right? But when you combine them with three, what you get is this four numbers, the sum of the squares of the first three give you the last one. So it's still from Pythagoras, but there's four things, not three. So what would you call that? It's a Pythagorean, hmm. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not, a, it's not a, a, a triple anymore. It's a it's a quadruple, I guess, or a quad. Uh, makes me think of leg muscles. Anyway, one, two, two, and three. And there's, uh, just like with Pythagorean triads, there's an infinite number of these, right? So anyway, you can go ahead and find those. Uh, what we can do here is, of course, we can simplify. So I've got five over five times three. So that gives us a third, okay? Uh, what do I do with this? You take the uh, cos of it. Very good. So cos uh, theta is equal to a third. So to find the acute theta, uh, thankfully, I can just go to my calculator. I can pop in cos inverse. Um, what did you guys get? I should, um, I've, got, I've got a number already ready, but have you guys got it there with your calculators? Well, yeah, so my question was going to be... Oh. In 
Degrees or radians? Degrees or radians? Yeah, great question. So um, it's funny, right? Because in this question, uh, because I just <laughs> I just wrote it, um, I haven't defined us in theta. Uh, sorry, in degrees or radians. Um, I'll give you an answer in a second. But my question to all of you is, um, what might be a reason we want degrees or radians? Like, what skews you using in one direction or the other? Um, I usually find. Uh, like when we were doing the uh, complex numbers unit, the, the whole um, use of radians was um, important. So yes. Uh, yes, that's right. You're, okay, so, so you've noticed um, in complex numbers, we exclusively, in fact, um, I'd be very surprised if you find anywhere where they don't do this, um, and I'll give you the reason why in a second. We pretty much exclusively use radians in complex numbers. Uh, but let's let's rewind for a minute because it's not just you Extension 2 students who know about radians. Um, you, you're the only ones who know about complex numbers, but if you went to an Extension 1 student or even an advanced student, they, they learn what radians are. Um, again, I'm going to pose the question, why might an advanced or an Extension 1 student choose say for example radians over degrees have you if you've never been told this before i'll, I'll happily tell you but does anyone know what's going on there the okay so it's it's to do with um yes this this circularity um when you when you look and you say okay can i what should i divide this assumption to should i go 360 degrees or should I go 2 pi, going with radians makes the calculation of things like the circumference or, or an arc, like a part of the circumference, much easier, okay? Um, this is all true, right? However, I, I might point out in, in a question like this, uh, or indeed even in complex numbers, you don't necessarily have circles explicitly coming up anywhere. You can, you can create them, um, but you don't have to. Um, let me give you the real fundamental reason, and um, hopefully it might explain why we do it in, um, in complex numbers. The reason why we care about um, radians the most within the context of this course is because of this result. Um, tell me, uh, we're, in, we're in thetas at the moment, so I'm differentiating with respect to theta. What is the derivative of sine theta? Can you guys tell me what that is? Cos theta. That's cos theta, right? But guess what? I know this is shocking, but it's only cos theta in radians. Uh, the, the, the gradient function of sine theta is only cos theta in radians because if you took um, a version of like what would the graph look like, right? If I went from um, 0 to 2 pi in radians, okay, this is what it looks like. And if you go ahead and you actually, you know, take a ruler to make a tangent, and if you were to, you know, go ahead and, and work out, say for example, the origin, that's a nice convenient point, right? Um, what's the gradient there? The gradient is equal to, the gradient would be, at the origin would be equal to 1, but only if you were in radians. If you were in degrees, um, 2 pi is, what is that, 6.28, right? So actually, in degrees, your, um, your graph hasn't gotten very far at all. It's only gone like 6 degrees, right? So it's something like, if I was drawing sine, it would look like this. It would be super flat, right? I have to go all the way to 360 degrees to get a full cycle of sine. Now, if you have a look at this blue line here that I've drawn, right? The gradient there is clearly not going to be the same. It's much, it's much lower. It's much flatter, okay? It's only in radians in that scale that you get a nice gradient. Um, and if you recall, like that m equals 1, that gives you this. And then you say, oh, the gradient here is 0. And then you only get this cos graph if you're in radians, okay? Now, you might be saying, Mr. Wu, how did we get to calculus? <laughs> We're in vectors, right? Um, well, number one, Mrs. Isles, you did ask the question about degrees and radians. I'm about to answer it. Uh, do you remember in complex numbers, this comes to your answer, Sean, why we care about trigonometry in complex numbers. It's because we know the rectangular form of a complex number. We could say it as x plus i, y. Um, but there's two other forms, right? What are the two other forms that you've got? Um, cis theta. Okay, yep. So yeah. cis is um, its an abbreviation for cos plus i sine. Yep. Just, just for completeness, what's the other one, by the way? Um, it's the Euler uh, thing, which is e to the other uh, yep. theta. Yeah. Yep, that's right. And don't forget there's, um, there's a modulus. And so that's, we have r for the radius, right? Um, and actually, I've, I've given you just a unit one anyway. So let me just fix up that bit over here. That should have an r out the front as well. Now, the key thing is, it's, it's the relationship between the um, trigonometric form and the exponential form. The relationship between them 
is calculus. And um, if you've not seen the proof for like why you can get from an exponential to this cos and sine thing, it's quite bizarre actually. I remember looking at it and being like, what's going on here? Um, it's calculus is what's going on underneath. Um, if you like, I've got like a ton of videos about this. I'll link it in the Teams channel if um, you'd like me to find it more easily for you. But to bring this all the way back, right? We care about radians because they let us do calculus, basically, with trigonometric functions. And because complex numbers is built, all the stuff in complex numbers is built off of calculus, even if you don't see it, it's there in the background, um, you need to use radians to do that. Now, finally, sorry, it was a deep rabbit hole, we can come back to here, right? In vectors, are we doing any calculus with these vectors? No, it tends to be like a real world. Yeah, bigger. that's exactly right. It's like we're not actually interested in do these angles change? Does the vector get longer, shorter, etc. over time? Um, calculus is the mathematics of change in the same way that like probability is the mathematics of uncertainty and geometry is the mathematics of, of measurement, right? Uh, there's no calculus really in how we learn vectors, um, at least not in this topic. So for that reason, this is a very long way of saying Actually, it doesn't matter whether you're in degrees or radians. Um, I know probably I could have just told you that out the gate, but I do want you to have a, like, one of the things I hated back in school um, and at university for that matter is when I asked a question and I just got told a rule and I never knew what the rule was about. Like, why is it this sometimes and sometimes you don't care? In this context, angles, uh, sorry, can be in degrees or radians because we are sort of not doing any uh, differentiation or integration or things like that. So, <laughs> I expect by now your calculators have told you something, right? Uh, were you in degrees or radians, just out of curiosity? Degrees. Degrees? Okay, what'd you get? Uh, 70.5. Yeah, me too. So, 70.5 degrees, I suppose I should say that's to one decimal place. Um, and I'm satisfied with that, right? I don't know, Mrs. Arles, did you get it in radians? I guess it's like, what would that be? My was <laughs> okay, no problem. That's all right. I mean, uh, a radian is something like 57 degrees, so this would be, like, I don't know, 1.2-ish, but, you know, I'm, I'm quite fine with it. Uh, maybe, actually, I will say, uh, one thing that might skew you towards uh, being in degrees rather than radians, if they don't ask you, is we did ask for an acute angle, right? So just to check, like, oh, is that acute? Like, I, I know that 70 degrees is acute without even thinking about it. Whereas when I'm in radians, I have to remember, wait, what's an acute angle in radians again? Uh, pi is a straight angle, so a right angle is pi on two, that's 1.57. Um, so there's just a bit more thinking involved, but I'm satisfied with this. Does that make sense? How are you doing so far?